Happy Mother's Day. It's an 80 degree day in Los Angeles and Staples Center filled to capacity for game three of the Western Conference semifinals. The San Antonio Spurs up two games to none. The defending NBA champions against the Los Angeles Lakers in game three. Al Michaels, Doc Rivers, Michelle Tafoya, welcome to Los Angeles. The Lakers are not mathematically dead if they lose, but this might as well be judgment day for this team. A team that made additions in the offseason. They were supposed to be a team for the ages, but the story of this season is that Tony Parker of the Spurs has made the Lakers look like a team for the aged. Doc, you're down to love. They come home. Can you make major adjustments? Do you have to make major adjustments if you're the Lakers? You can, but you don't have to. I think the Lakers are looking at themselves saying, we could have won game one. We could have won game two. I think they just have to be a more determined Los Angeles Lakers team, a better team, but themselves. They have to stay with who they are and do that better. If they do that, things may take care of themselves. And finish better. There's no doubt about that. They blew a fourth quarter lead. In game one, here are the Bud Light starting lineups for today's game. Turkoglu, Duncan, and Esterovich up front for San Antonio. Devin George with Carl Malone and Shaquille O'Neal for L.A. Tony Parker has been the man of the series thus far with Bowen in the backcourt for San Antonio. Gary Payton, Kobe Bryant for the Lakers. And let's check in with Michelle. Well, Al, Rick Fox has been with the Lakers for five years. He won three championships with Phil Jackson and Shaq and Kobe. But lately, he has been saying publicly that this current incarnation of the Lakers is a team that can't find harmony and may have too many stars. But Gary Payton told me earlier today the Lakers have aired some of their complaints. They put aside their differences. They're ready to just play basketball. And Al, a win could go a long way toward restoring that harmony today. Michelle, very much like last year, as Bryant with a 17-footer misses. San Antonio won the first two games when they met last year in the playoffs. Lakers came home and won two. And then in the third game, the Lakers almost erased a huge deficit. Robert Ory shot in and out. San Antonio won the game, went on to win the series and the title. This is Parker with Devin George on him at the outset. Duncan from the baseline missing everything. Bowen then misses everything as the 24 second clock expires. Yeah, and if you're the Los Angeles Lakers, you love that the Spurs are slowing down playing half court offense. Now, that was just the first possession. They would love to get the Spurs to play that way all game. Ray Puffman said before this series started that they had to make this game, at least for them, a transition game. So far in this series, they've done that. Gary Payton. Malone working the outside with Bryant inside the shack underneath double team score. You're going to see a steady dose of that. The Spurs have decided that they're going to front Shaquille O'Neal. You know the old school thought is that you couldn't do it. The Spurs have gotten away with it for two games. I think you're going to see more locks to Shaq in this game. And Parker's first foray into the lane. Turns out a little differently than it did in San Antonio. That's blocked out of bounds. Tony living in the lane, beating his guy off the dribble, and then Shaq couldn't get over it in the two games in San Antonio, and he was living underneath. Yeah, and again, a lot of that is out of the pick and row, and more of it is out of transition. Second spur turnover, 18 on the shot clock. A minute and a half into the game. Steve Javi, Jack Neese, and Blaine Weichelt are the officials today. Kobe losing it, regaining it now. Four on the shot clock. And George on a three second yeah. violation. The Lakers give it up. And again, the reason on Kobe. the three second is because everyone thought George was going to take the first shot. So all the players, the Laker players, were in the lane getting rebounding position, but he didn't take the shot. Devin looked like he didn't know how much time was on the clock. He had a little bit more than three seconds, and he started to dish it off again. Turkoglu for three, and San Antonio on the board. Turkoglu came over from Sacramento, was coming off the bench for the first half of the season. Then they made him the starter and made Mono Ginobili come off the bench, and Ginobili's been a fabulous sixth man. Malone was going to give up the opportunity and then decided, well, why not? 
Well, no one was guarding him. <laughs> you know, I think he thought, wow, I'm going to take this. Now, again, so far, you look at the Lakers and we talk about adjustments. The one adjustment they've made so far is Gary Payton has had the ball in his hand a lot thus far. A lot of pick and rolls for him and post-ups. Double team on Bowen in the corner. Turkoglu has to come out with it. Now Parker in amongst the trees and they take it away again. Here comes Peyton with Bryant and Peyton gets fouled on his way to the hoop. Well, that's the other big difference in this one because Tony Parker twice now in the middle and the Lakers have converged on him. And both times the paint has had a crowd. You know, when you look at the film from the game one and two, when Parker gets into the paint, there was nobody in the paint with him. The two times he's gotten into the paint this, this afternoon, there's been three and four Lakers crowding the paint. Basically, what they're gonna say is, Tony Parker, you're gonna give the ball up when you get in the paint this afternoon, and someone else is gonna have to make shots. These two teams have combined for 54.9% of their free throws in the first two games. Peyton makes one of two, and the Lakers lead by a deuce with 9-10 to play in the opening quarter. The Spurs one for four at the outset from the field. Parker again underneath, and that time all the way. Just the quickness factor you can't measure. You know, everyone is saying that Gary Payton should do this, Gary Payton should do that. Again, lob out. That's what we said. You're going to see a lot more of that. And that's why Greg Popovich is calling the timeout. The Lakers have had three days to look at them. What are they doing? Well, they're fronting Shaq. We're going to take advantage of that. And this is the second time already that they've gotten a lob over top and Shaq has gotten to the bucket. In the first game, San Antonio defense that perfectly. Not here, though. The NBA playoffs on ABC brought to you by the day after tomorrow when it's all on the line play like there's no tomorrow Wendy's classic hamburgers it's better here and the new Chevrolet's 10 new cars and trucks in 20 months an American Revolution well, welcome back to Los Angeles 7-5 Lakers one of the things we talked about is adjustments that you have to make in the playoff series and I want you to look right here here is Tim Duncan Tim Duncan on the lobs you're fronting Shaq and he is the guy that wants to go help but look at Carl Malone at the top of your picture before he's been in the elbow area now he's a step further that makes it a step further for Tim Duncan to get there and that's how so far that the Lakers have been getting a lot here again now watch at the top of your screen you see Tim Duncan look where Carl Malone is at they're moving Carl Malone around so Duncan can't be the help guy that's what playoff adjustments are all about Film study paying off. 7 5 Lakers. Early first quarter. Bryant right on top of Parker and staying with him as he dishes it off. And they work it to Bowen in the corner. And Bowen hits one for three. Bruce Bowen loves the corner. Led the, led the NBA in three point percentage last season. Yeah, and again, that play was set up by Tony Parker in the pick and roll. Sometimes, you know, Parker doesn't get the assist or the bucket, but he's the reason for it. Peyton Post. This is what we, we thought we would see more of. Bryant. I like that adjustment because it does two things. Number one, it makes Tony Parker play defense on a post. Number two, they have to help, which will open up the other shooters. Brian hitting a three-pointer. He took only one three-point shot in game two. Here's Turkoglu inside the arc. O'Neal with the rebound. Talking about the Lakers and what they have to do. The other thing, clearly, cut down on the turnovers. 38 in the first two games in the series and a near one here. And in fact, Peyton does lose the ball out of bounds. Parker creating that with tough defense again. <laughs> right on cue. You yeah. know, and that's been the Laker problem. Now, Phil Jim Jackson has been saying they just have to be more efficient, really. He said when they look at the film, they've had a lot of unforced turnovers, but I don't think we're giving enough credit to the Spur defense. Case in point right there, created by Parker. Here's Duncan's first effort. And Gary Payton will bring it back to the Lakers who are up by two. Game four will be here on Tuesday. If the fifth game is needed, ABC primetime Thursday. And look at that. And that brings the crowd to its feet as Shaquille O'Neal 
pays it off with a slam dunk and a four point lead. Again, Gary Payton is being allowed to play basketball like Gary Payton plays. This is not a triangle. They're running a bunch of pick and rolls for Gary Payton, and that is an adjustment. Shaquille O'Neal, 32 points in the game the other night. Bryant diving for it. Ball still loose, and O'Neal dives for it. And the foul is on Shaquille. But that is exactly what the Lakers have to do. The two super superstars each going to the wood. You know, if you're Phil Jackson, you're thinking, oh, Shaq, don't do this. It's a bad foul. But if you're Phil Jackson, you're thinking deep down, that's the type of effort that they need. In game one and two, Phil Jackson and the Lakers felt that the Spurs played harder. Got all the loose balls, made all the big plays. So that's great leadership by their two best players. Bowen missing. Well, if anybody thought the Lakers were just going to roll over and die amidst all the consternation and craziness, that play right there told you all you need to know. Kevin Willis is in the game. Rasha Nesterovich is out. Here comes Parker now. And Parker throws it away. Bowen was cutting to the basket. And Parker threw it to a spot that Bowen normally loves to spot up from the that, corner. Well, you're saying what Parker is thinking. <laughs> That's exactly what Parker is thinking. Wait a minute. You run to the corners. You never go to the yep. bucket. And that's where Parker thought he would be. Into O'Neal. Working on Willis. Left hands it in. Kevin Willis, the oldest guy in the league. And there's Magic Johnson. Jack Nicholson, of course. Wouldn't miss this one, and the Lakers have their biggest lead, six points. Shaq is four for four. Malone on Duncan. Turkaloo just got it off at the buzzer. O'Neal with a rebound. Past the halfway mark of the opening quarter. Payton off the O'Neal pick. Timeout. Timeout San Antonio. Again, Al. Payton involved in the pick and roll. First shot. Instead of waiting, he's going quick. He's not allowing himself to be double teamed. Second, Gary Payton. Gary Payton, they're putting him into his comfort zone playing pick and roll basketball, not triangle, and that's exactly the way Peyton likes it. 16-8 Los Angeles, the Spurs, three of 10 now from the field. Duncan has missed his first two shots, and Shaquille O'Neal has scored eight points, four for four from the field. The, the, the adjustment that I really like that Phil Jackson is doing is he's putting the ball in Gary Payton's hands, and he's letting him dribble the ball. I know that sounds kind of strange. We're talking about basketball. But when you play triangle basketball, it's dedicated, it's predicated more on passing and cutting, not on dribbling. The ball, Payton is a dribbler. He, that's how he gets comfortable. I like that they're trying to do that through the triangle, but give him some opportunity. And the second thing they're doing is allowing him to be aggressive, and you're going to have to live with some of his bad shots. Gary Payton with four assists in the first quarter. Lakers start off hitting 70 percent. And Ginobili gets fouled by Bryant. Yeah, and, and that foul, you should credit to Greg Popovich. You know, he was up screaming and yelling the entire time out. In, in essence, working the officials, and, and so you get the call. So credit that one to Popovich. Lakers have already scored more points in the opening quarter than they did in the entire opening quarter in game one when they were down by 7, 21 14. They only had 17 in the second game in the first quarter. Now they have 16 and had the ball for the moment, but it's re stolen by Turkaloo. Ooh, and Willis. Watch to hit the back of the rim and bound to the scorer's table. 
Yeah, he tried to put a little bit more on that. And, you know, you look at Kevin Willis. He has those big arms, but he has those small arms also and small hands, and he really just lost the ball. He can still fly at the age of 41. Just had a little trouble with the rhythm that time. Kick ball out of bounds. Willis. Never been known for great hands. You know, I played with him for five, six years, and uh, I learned quickly that his hands aren't great. You go back with Kevin all the way to Atlanta. Yes. Finally, last year, he won a ring for the first time. Comes back to try to win another one. Duncan knocks it away. The Lakers will inbound the ball, the ball with 11 seconds on the shot clock. Peyton looking inside. He was trying to get it to O'Neal, but he was fronted by Willis, and then Bryant hits for three. So two threes for Kobe Bryant, and Bryant now with six points. Malone, can he hold it? He can, and here comes Peyton right into our table. Everything goes down. Coffee, cameras, and all of the rest, but the Lakers are men on a mission in this first quarter. Oh, well, they really are. I mean, look at the effort by everyone. Devin George, Carl Malone jumping over tables, Gary Payton running into the scorer's table. This is what San Antonio was doing in San Antonio. Now, the Lakers are trying to do it in L.A. All of our ad libs are gone. Yeah. <laughs> from this point on, it's all us, Al. That's it. <laughs> all right, we'll say goodnight from Safer Center. <laughs> 19-8, Lakers on top by 11, under four to play in the opening period. O'Neal, that's his first miss. Parker. Peyton got a hand in for the foul. Lakers over the limit right now. Or will be. Yeah, and, and the next story next line in this game will be fouls because right now Gary Payton has a foul, Kobe Bryant has a foul, and so does Shaq. And so the next one of them pick up a foul, then all of a sudden Lakers are in foul trouble. Ginobili losing it in the lane, gets it back. And Ori keeps it alive. Good work on the offensive glass. Ori's been. A bit of a good luck charm during the playoffs. San Antonio has performed much better with him in the lineup. Not that his numbers are necessarily terrific, but defensively and the spark he's given them have paid off. And now, call is against the Lakers. Wow, I, I'm not so sure about that call either. Carl Malone? They're, they're calling it on Carl Malone, and, and him and Ido Turkoglu were tangled up going to the basket. But I really thought both guys were giving it to each other. I actually thought they were going to call a double foul and not a foul just from Carl Malone. You know, just because you're bigger, it looks like at times you're being more physical than the other guy. But Turkoglu was giving Carl Malone just as much pressure as Malone was giving him. So I thought in that case, it was a foul, but it was a foul on both guys. Parker and Malone has to come out on Parker who misses George with a rebound and the quick hands of Ginobili Boy, I tell you a rebound is never safe when Ginobili is on the floor Spurs are ice cold right now they're all for their last nine and that ends that drought three pointer 19 12 and great timeout by Phil Jackson the question is yeah they've come out and played with great energy but can they do it for four quarters Al. 238 left in the period. It's judgment day for the Lakers, and they're playing like it. 238 remaining in the quarter. 1912 LA. Mike Tirico in the studio. This Taco Bell studio update on our way back to LA. The other Western Conference semifinal all square at one thanks to Sam Cassell. Minnesota erased a 10 point fourth quarter deficit to square the series at one. Game three Monday. Back to Alan Doc. Hope they're all dry and okay in LA. Still cleaning up, Mike. St. Nick is here, of course. Jack Nicholson. 
Denzel Washington is at the game as well. Steven Spielberg, who is the Drew Eslikoff of motion pictures, <laughs> Drew, our director. Meg Ryan is here. Ben Affleck in his uh, Celtic green. There you go. There you go. Dustin Hoffman as well. Lakers on top by seven. Let's check in with Michelle Tafoya. In that timeout, Al, Greg Popovich said, we are not matching their energy. They are clogging the lane on defense. He urged Tony and Manu, continue to drive, break up their defense. And he said, take your time. We have all day. The players were talking about the fact that the Lakers are playing with unbelievable energy, but they don't think they can sustain this through all four quarters, Al. Interesting point. We'll watch that. Of course, the Lakers, the older team, along to Shaq. Malone was open for the shot, and then he saw O'Neal coming in and lobbed it to him perfectly. Ten points for O'Neal. And again, the adjustment is the movement of Malone. Not that Shaq is getting more open. He is because of Carl Malone. That time they put him in the corner. Robert Horry had to guard him. They've been using Malone's guy to help on the front. Now Malone is handling the ball and passing the ball. He can't be the guy. That's the third dunk they've gotten off the line. San Antonio turnover because Ginobili slipped and fell down. Trying to cut back. Derek Fisher in the game for the first time for the Lakers. Inside to O'Neal, but Ori fouls him. Ori, who played with the Lakers, won three championships with him. And then last year, that shot, that in and out shot that could have turned the series around for the Lakers and then signs with San Antonio in the offseason. Yeah, just think if that shot goes in. I mean, who knows what happens here? Well, very much like last year where San Antonio wins the first two, Lakers come home and win two, and then the pivotal game five. Malone. Lakers by 11. See, you know, coming into this game, I thought Carl Malone had to be the key guy. He has to make open shots, and he has to find areas to take away the help guy on Shaq, and he's doing it. Taken away again, and so with Duncan on the bench, the Lakers try to extend their lead as Peyton shoots it into the corner to Fisher, and the crowd wanted a foul. Fisher got banged as he let go. No foul called, and then Parker goes coast to coast the other way. Yeah, that quick shot, and that was a bad shot, is very like much like a turnover because quick rebound off and running and that's the way the Spurs want to play. Some, sometimes your offensive shots leads to the other team's baskets and in that case that's exactly what happened. Perfication point as Parker who's played every minute of the first quarter in each game in the playoffs has four points. Malone is again. Uh, alone and Shaquille O'Neal and got the rebound but had it taken away and Parker feeds Ginobili for the lay-in. You see how another turnover. A turnover leads to a basket for the Spurs. That's how they've won game one and two and a quick bad shot leads to a basket as well. Bryant outside the Peyton passes on the three. Here's Fisher from outside. O'Neal with good positioning. Now Bryant who's hit two threes has three threes now. I like his patience. Kobe Bryant is not trying to take over the game by force. He's letting it come to him, and in essence, he's still taking it over with his talent. It's a quiet nine points. Three threes will do that. Bryant with the rebound here. A couple of seconds differential between the shot and game clock, so the Lakers will slow it down and milk it. Trying to stretch a 10 point advantage as the period climaxes. Underneath, it's Malone from Bryant. And Kobe Bryant instructed Carl Malone where to go on that play. He basically put him in the spot that he ended up making it from. And Parker doesn't hit this one. Last week, you'll recall in game one, he hit one at the buzzer that turned a four point lead into a seven. Not here, though. The Lakers are up 28. 16 at the end of one and you're watching ABC Sports home of the NBA Finals. You're watching the day after tomorrow's presentation of ABC Sports play like there's no tomorrow.
We're back in Los Angeles. Al Michaels, Doc Rivers, Michelle Tafoya. The Lakers, a very good quarter. In that quarter, O'Neal 10 points, Bryant 9 points, and the Lakers exhibiting as much teamwork, Doc, as they have in weeks. Yeah, I want you to look here. Here's Carl Malone at the bottom of your screen. Look at Kobe Bryant point. He's trying to instruct Carl Malone, get out. Watch Carl Malone come back. Kobe tells him again, go to the opposite block and watch what happens. Kobe's knows that they're going to help. Who gets to lay up? Carl Malone, but it was from Kobe Bryant. That's playing together as a team. Lakers, after briefly trailing in the first quarter, outscore San Antonio 21 to 8. Jason Hart comes in at the point as Tony Parker gets his first rest. Tim Duncan comes back. San Antonio cold after a pretty good start. Duncan didn't score in the period. The thing with Duncan, you know, is that at some point he's going to get involved in this series or in this game. The thing you like about Duncan, he doesn't press it. Here's Ginobili scoring. So Slava Medvedenko and Kareem Rush come in for the Lakers as we start the second period. Lakers have Fisher and Rush with Malone. Bryant goes to the small forward spot and Medvedenko. Bryant. Working on Ginobili and they're going to wave it off. He traveled. Lakers by nine. You know, Doc, we talked about Duncan. No points in the first quarter. He had no points the other night in the fourth quarter in game two. So Tim Duncan has played the equivalent of a half game without a point. Yeah, but he still is very valuable because though he may not score, he's going to make sure his teammates score. He gets everyone involved from his position. He's over two today. Bounce pass, an errant one stolen by Malone. Quickly to Bryant out in front. He gets fouled by Brown on his way to the hoop. Now, you have not seen a lot of transition buckets from the Los Angeles Lakers. And this afternoon, you've seen three or four of them already, or at least a tip. So they're really trying to push the ball up the floor. Bryant for two, a minute into the second quarter. Playoffs continue tonight. Detroit and New Jersey as the Nets get home down 2 0. That's on TNT. And then Monday, tomorrow night on TNT, Miami at Indiana and Sacramento against Minnesota. That series tied at a game apiece. It's actually Indiana at Miami tomorrow on June 3, TNT. Well, the good news thus far, Al, is Duncan has his side in the free throw. Neither has Shaq, Bowen, or Nesterovich. So the free throw shooting is not all bad right now. The San Antonio four, well, they're one of one. Ginobili took the only shot, and the Lakers two of four. Brown got by Bryant, but Kobe was there to impede him enough, gets the rebound. Tries to get the screen from Malone. Rush. Malone pressured outside by Duncan. Eight on the clock. Bryant, a little fall away, got it. See, that's, that's what you call a great equalizer because the Spurs play terrific defense, but Kobe Bryant is just better than that defense on that play. Spurs in Detroit gave up the exact number of points this season. They tied for the league lead in defense as Brown gets free underneath the score. Detroit and San Antonio allowing only 84 points per game during the regular season. Malone bouncing it into Bryant. Now they'll met the Deco outside. And great help by Robert Orr. Oh, and Malone, as he goes toward the hoop, gets knocked down. That's a foul. Bryant was trying to get it to him. I tell you, Kobe Bryant and Carl Malone have great chemistry on the floor right now. That's the second or third time they played the two-man game flawlessly. I mean, right here, this is all eye contact. You can see the slip, the pass, and the trip. Nesterovich back in for San Antonio. Ori departs. Fisher all the way. Derek Fisher 
three championship rings. Lakers started through the years and then gave up that starting spot when they got Peyton. And a foul away from the ball, I believe, on Medvedenko. Yeah, I think Fisher's been watching some Tony Parker videos. <laughs> Very similar. Great move. You know, Greg Popovich said something early, and Michelle Tafoya touched on it, is he told his team to relax. We have all afternoon, meaning if you can just hang around, hang around, at some point they're banking that Laker Energy takes a nap, and that's when they can take over the game. And Bedenko comes away with it, up to Bryant. Three-point attempt for Rush. And the second year guy from Missouri in and out Ginobili for San Antonio now. Nesterovic over Malone short. Ginobili. Hart. And Hart loses the ball. Nine turnovers now for the Spurs. Lakers by 12. You're watching ABC Sports. Home in the NBA Finals. My mom was the captain of her high school basketball team um, back in 27 when she played high school basketball as a senior in Wolf Point, Montana. Um, it was a full court game. It went to half court after that. But uh, she was a truly a great competitor and uh, you know she had a sweater letter sweater that uh, I wore as a kid I was like seven eight or nine or something like that I used to wear a letter sweater and she'd come out and shoot baskets with me and uh, Her competition is always her competitive nature. I should say is always something that everybody say well, that's where Phil got his competitive nature is from his mom Phil Jackson has never lost three consecutive playoff games as an NBA head coach remembering his mom on Mother's Day and Happy Mother's Day to all the, the great mommies. Yes, I'd like to say Happy Mother's Day to my mom. And my mommy too. And Michelle as well. You gotta call her mommy on Mother's Day, don't yes, you, you <laughs> Here's Fisher driving. And O'Neal is there to clean it up. The fourth row dunk for Shaq in this game. And they may have had one in the two games combined before. Duncan back in the game, Medvedenko on him. Here comes Brown. Got it. Well, I tell you, Devin Brown has really been impressive for the Spurs in this series. And, you know, again, he's a scorer. He doesn't care what league he's playing in, he's still going to try to score. Talked about him last week. He's a kid that grew up in San Antonio, went to use T San Antonio. Came in and gave them a Spark on two occasions in game one as George has it taken away by the quick hands of Parker and then Parker gets tied up by George and a technical foul is called on him. Wow. <laughs> I don't know what he did. Um, I don't know if that's a flagrant or just a tag. I didn't see him say anything, but again, he, he had to say something because that was a quick. Phil Jackson really does not like when his players pick up technical fouls. Especially in the third game of a playoff situation where you're down too low. You know, and especially by Devin George. Yes. He might be able to take one from Kobe. You know, I thought they were going to call a flagrant on that. And you can see Devin George standing there. Obviously, there had to be some kind of exchange. The only two times the Spurs have been to the foul line today have been on technical fouls. Duncan couldn't get rid of it, but gets it back and then tries to bank it in. And O'Neal is there for the rebound. Bryant getting a rest. Lob goes into O'Neal and too far. And that was what cost them dearly in the first game the other day. Yeah, I'm looking at Phil Jackson, and you can see he is really frustrated because those are the ones he does not want. Uh, there was nowhere for Shaq to go, even if he had caught the ball. And that's what he's been talking about the unforced turnovers. Throwing it so deep, there's nothing for him to do with it. Brown from the corner. 
You know, it's, you, you look at Devin Brown again, and they've chosen to leave him open. I think the thing that they forget, Devin Brown again likes to score. So that's right up his alley. Bounce into O'Neal, and O'Neal that time was able to save it by throwing it off one of the Spurs. Yeah, and the Spurs got away with one because Shaq had great post position, but Derek Fisher throws the pass off the mark and leads it. Boy, that's a Nolan Ryan type of fastball mm. right there. Can you imagine Shaq on the mound? Oof. He can hand it to the catcher. Lakers have Malone coming into the game and Peyton as well. Fisher goes out. Medvedenko will take a seat. Lakers will inbound with eight on the clock. O'Neal well away from the basket. And they've got to get the shot up in a hurry. And Peyton does from three. O'Neal with a rebound. Parker comes in to help. And then Duncan clears the glass. Rushes on Parker. Duncan still has not scored today. And falls down. Again, Carl Malone pulling the chair. Yep. He knows all the tricks. Malone inside. Mistervich doesn't pull the chair on Malone and helps to take it away. But that was a no foul. I mean, it looked bad, but it really was not a foul. Parker drove all the way in again. Wow, this is a heck of a little combination yeah. here. Duncan on rush, and George comes over to help out, and we've got a foul. Lakers by eight with 5.25 to go in the first half. Game three, Western Conference semifinals. playoffs on ABC brought to you by Coors Aspen Edge so good it doesn't even know it's low carb GMC we are professional grade and Van Helsing now adventure lives forever beautiful Sunday Jack Black is here at Staples Center in downtown Los Angeles and again happy Mother's Day on this 9th of May the Lakers are up <laughs> by eight listening to <laughs> Brian Wilson of Beach Boys fame is here. And Bill Russell and Bill Walton are in the building. I didn't see uh, Mr. Walton when we came in. I saw They're going to come Bill back Russell. and play for the Celtics this yes, year. Yes, I'll bet. Well, Bill, a former coach. <laughs> Take a look at the two guys here. O'Neal with a dozen points and Duncan has none. And not only does Duncan have no points, which doesn't alarm me a, a lot. More importantly, he only has one assist and three turnovers. Now four, four turnovers. turnovers. And Carl Malone is pulling all the tricks out, pulling the chair, swiping before he gets the ball above his shoulders. Malone, all world in musical chairs. Tough shot. Pressure was put on by Bowen. The Spurs have only 10 points from their starters. They have 17 off the bench because Ginobili has nine and Brown has eight. But you can feel the energy going away from this game a little bit, and that's the advantage to the Spurs. Duncan missing again. Duncan is now 0 for 5 from the field. And O'Neal gets tripled as he goes to the hoop. <laughs> that tells you just how strong Shaquille O'Neal is. You have a guy jumping. His whole body weight is trying to stop you, and it doesn't move Shaq at all. Watch this. Devin Brown. I mean, most of the time, it's the guy on the floor who falls, not the guy Devin Brown. It's the other guy. Pretty impressive. Found not in the act of shooting. Lakers will inbound. Each team now with three team fouls in the quarter. Four and a half to go. Los Angeles on top by eight. Bryant from Malone. 
Malone is there. And you talked about that two-man game. What a classic example right there between the two guys, Malone and Bryant. Back and forth, back and forth. Mr. the shot, put it in. Yeah, and the reason that Karl Malone got that rebound is because of the two-man game. Who is that contesting Kobe's shot? That's Karl Malone's guy. That way, Karl Malone has no one on him, and he crashes the boards, and he gets a three-point play opportunity. Again, the two-man game with Kobe and Karl Malone has been great thus far for the Lakers. Malone 77 percent during the regular season from the free throw line. Lead remains 10. Sterovich. Ginobili got his feet behind the line and then Sterovich backs it out but Bryant is there. Under four left in the half. Peyton inside fighting for it and Ginobili ties him up. Lakers. And timeout. Timeout yes. call by the Lakers. They tied him up, but Duncan said, come on, if we tied him up before the timeout. Officials say no. Timeout LA. Back in Los Angeles, and you know, sometimes it looks like a basketball game, and sometimes it looks like a scrum, and that's what's going on here. But watch Carl Malone. He's the guy who called the 22nd, not the guy on the ball, and that's why they got the timeout. Heads up call by Carl Malone. And he gave the official sign for a 22. Yes. Not, not just the regular timeout. He wanted to make sure. <laughs> that's thinking. <laughs> Bryant under pressure. Got it. Well, that's great defense again. That's just better offense. But you can't defend Kobe much better, and Bruce Bowden would take that all night. Two-pointer for Kobe, who's hit three threes. Now Bowen for three. Deadly. See, they're leaving Bruce Bowen and Devin Brown, and they're going to help Gary Payton on pick and rolls. Now, the key for the Spurs is the guys that they are leaving have to make shots. Shaq. Too hard, but got fouled. See, that's why you don't want to be behind him, because if you give him deep post position, then Shaq's going to at least get to the basket and cause a foul. So O'Neal, it's kind of been painful at the free throw line during the regular season and postseason. Don't forget Thursday night if a fifth game is necessary, primetime ABC 8 Eastern, Lakers Spurs. If a sixth is necessary next Sunday in the Minnesota Sacramento series, we'll be in Sacramento for that one. That series is tied at a game apiece. Ori comes in for Nesterovich. Here comes Fisher into the game. Malone goes out. Shaq misses the first to two, and here's Michelle. Derek Fisher, who just came back into the game, didn't quite know what to expect in terms of team chemistry from Carl Malone and Gary Payton, but he told me recently that the minute the team boarded their flight to Hawaii for training camp, things were clear. Fisher says Payton is, quote, just a fun guy, and Malone is great to his teammates, and that these two were more willing to fit in than he would have ever imagined, Al. Meanwhile, after Shaq misses two, Parker throws up an air ball. See, that was about a step outside Tony Parker's range. I don't think he really wanted that shot, but they went under the pick, and it almost forced his hand to take it. Just because you're open does not mean you have to take the shot. Timeout Spurs with L.A. up 39-30. Lakers by nine, Verizon Wireless halftime report coming up with Byron Scott and Tom Tolbert. Is Tony Parker finding out what happens when you become the focal point of the defense of the series? Oh, definitely, Mike. He's finding out right now that the Lakers, you do have, I do have your attention, Los Angeles, and I think right now they're proving the point by making sure every time he goes to the basket, they're letting you feel it a little bit. Hey, what do you know? They couldn't even tow a type of deodorant he was wearing the first two games. <laughs> now they're right next to him. They know. I think it's code red, actually. More personal Red hygiene spice. updates Cold and red. more on the Larry Cold Brown, Rod Cold Thorne, Thorne red, yeah. war of words that has Cold Byron spice. in the middle. English at halftime. English Al. <laughs> All right, thank you, guys. I want to hear that report. Larry Brown <laughs> yeah. and Rod Thorne getting into it? It's never bad when guys get into it, Al. It's, it's, it's good for everyone. The Lakers have been into it all year long. Meanwhile, Duncan does not have a point in the game. 
Yeah, the thing to notice is the crowds. I mean, every time he shoots the ball, every time he gets the ball, there's a crowd or Carmelo is pulling the chair. I mean, there's always at least three guys around Tim Duncan when he's going up, and Carmelo is doing a sensational job on him as an individual also. Nine-point game. You can take a look at in games one and two what those two big guys have done for San Antonio and what's happened today. You know, Doc, it's a nine-point game. The Lakers are shooting 55%. The Spurs are shooting 33%. You would think the differential would be a little larger. Yeah, I, again, and I said this, Al, I don't know if Greg Popovich is that upset. I mean, obviously, he would like his team to be playing better. Tim Duncan hasn't scored. They're down nine points. Parker. No room in the lane to Ginobili now. Duncan. Still nothing. But the rebound comes out to Ori. A little over two to play. Ginobili partially blocked. And then the rebound by Shaquille. And a lot of contact in the backcourt. Looking for a foul. But Blaine Reichel was right there. And said, keep playing, boys. It must be game three. Because you can see right now that teams are getting a little testy with each other. And Steve Javi and Dak Nees and Blaine Reichel are going to try to take this game over and control it. Popovich, meanwhile, yelling at Ginobili. You know, that's when Ginobili can't understand that's English. Right. That's right. I don't understand what you're saying. Sp Mr. Spanish Popovich. only, Pop. I'm from Argentina. What do I know? <laughs> yes. Selective English. <laughs> Duncan 0 for 6. 0 for 7. It's batted out. Saved by Peyton at the sideline. Minute and a half. Gary in the lane and then falls down and in doing so travels. And then Ori tried to swipe it out of Peyton's hands to get it started back up the floor. It ended right there. Yeah. <laughs> Again, you can see that this is really starting to turn into a series. You remember how they said they like each other and, and it's all about respect? Well, that's all changing all of a sudden. Duncan, finally. So Tim Duncan went almost three full quarters without scoring. He's now one for eight. It's a seven-point game as we tick down to a minute. And this last minute is big for the Lakers. O'Neal got the roll, goes to the line. You know what's funny, Al? Bruce Bowen and Robert Owen, they had a chance to take the charge, but Shaq was rumbling down the middle of that lane, and you can see they kind of thought about it, but they made themselves very small. <laughs> Look at Ori. I mean, he was he, he got himself extremely skinny on that play. He was hoping that Shaq missed him. It's like being on the Harbor Freeway <laughs> yeah. and, a, and an 18-wheeler is coming at you. Excuse me. Devin George comes in. Bowen takes a seat. Switch is being made here. Devin Brown comes back into the game. Meanwhile, when O'Neal goes to the free throw line, Shaq is 18 of 64 wow. in the playoffs. That's 27 percent. That's not even that's not even that good of a batting average in baseball. Well, Barry Bonds has a better chance of getting a hit. Yes, he does. Than Shaq has of making a free throw. Then Bruce Bowen has of making a few free throw. Over for three today. <laughs> it's amazing. Nine point Laker lead under a minute to play. First half game three. Staples Center in Los Angeles. Parker. Fisher. Bryant passes up the three, drives in, gets fouled. Again, really important closing quarters out. I think in the first two games, that's what the Spurs have done. They've done a nice job of closing each quarter out and closing the game out. Right now, it's been the Lakers who have made runs at the beginning and end of both quarters. Bryant makes the first of two. Bryant back and forth so much this season to Colorado, and that will be again the case for his court proceedings this week. 
Malone comes into the game. These two teams will play game four here on Tuesday. Then if necessary, as O'Neal goes to the bench, a fifth game will be played in San Antonio, and we have it for you on ABC in primetime on Thursday. One for two for Bryant. Ten-point lead. Parker off balance. Yeah, that's Parker forcing it, you know. Now that's one thing he hasn't done. He's been very patient. Parker wanted to try to get a two for one opportunity, but it really never presented himself. And that's one of the few times that you've seen this young point guard try to force it because he's struggling a little bit right now. About a three second differential game and shot clock. Bryant shot clock is at one. He's got to get it away. He does at the buzzer and it goes over the top of the board and out of bounds. So Kobe got in effect the last shot of the first half pending the inbounds play here and a prayer and the Lakers are up by 10 so it's been a good first half for the Lakers as Ginobili off balance wow. flips one up came pretty close but that's the end of the first half a half in which San Antonio shot 31 percent. Duncan had two points. Parker had four. Lakers shot 53 percent. Bryant had 15 points. And O'Neal had 14. And we go to Michelle. With Kobe Bryant, an entirely different first half than games one and game two. Where did you guys summon up this kind of energy? Well, I mean, we're on our home floor. And uh, it's time for us to defend our home turf. And we came out with a lot of energy. Yeah, people have talked about you guys putting aside differences and spending some time before this game just kind of airing things out and deciding you just want to play basketball. Does it feel different out there? Yeah, well, you know, the interesting thing about it is it's all about execution. It's about knowing what we want to do and what we want to have accomplished. In the first half, we did a great job executing offensively and defensively, and uh, you know, we're going to have time with the lead as a result. Yeah, you have a lead, but they have hung in, Kobe. What do you do to, to, to even to hold them off even more? Well, you just continue to execute, and uh, you try to wear them down. Uh, the important thing is to remain consistent. All right, good luck. Thanks, Kobe. Thank you. Back to you, Al. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Brian and O'Neal with 29 of the Lakers' 42 points. Now coming up after the break, Mike, Tom, and Byron in our Times Square studio, the Verizon Wireless Halftime Report. They'll analyze the first half. Tell us more about that Larry Brown Rod Thorne feud in the New Jersey Detroit series. First half done in Los Angeles. Times Square in New York City. This is the Verizon Wireless Halftime Report. Now, your host, Mike Tirico. Well, how would the Lakers come out down 2-0? We've seen plenty of Shaq-tivity from Mr. O'Neal. Very active inside. Looking like that Shaq that they need to succeed. Up 10, trying to avoid going down 0-3. And no team's ever come back from 0-3 in the NBA playoffs. Verizon Wireless Halftime Time with Byron Scott and Tom Tolbert. Uh, very, very accurate. It was rare, guys. Very accurate pregame <laughs> analysis from you. You said it. Shaq and Kobe had to dominate. You said they had to hurt Tony Parker when he came inside. And both have happened. But you know what? The, you know, we, we know what we're talking about, Tom. What you tell <laughs> him right. that we do. You yes, know what we're talking about. You know, yeah. those guys came out and did a heck of a job <laughs> with energy and a sense of urgency when you talk about the Los Angeles Lakers. And when you look at this effort right here by Kobe Bryant diving for loose balls, the big fella takes down Hedo. I don't know if that was a tackle or a dive. And then the other Hall of Famer soon to be Carmelo <laughs> giving up his body to try to save the ball as well. You know, so the Lakers understood when, the start, when they started this game that they had to come out with that type of effort. Well, I'm not going to tell you right now. I'm always right. Sometimes the players don't do what they're supposed to do. <laughs> Today, they do what they're supposed to do. Keep your eye on Tony Parker here. Just keep your eye on the point guard in the middle of the screen and watch when he goes to the lane. We're the Lakers. Boom. Knock the ball away. Come to the lane again. Boom. Boom. Turnover. Come to the lane again. This time he's going to try to pass it. Whack and take that on your way out. I mean, he's hit the floor at least three times in this game, and they need to continue to do that. And right now he just doesn't look as comfortable as he did in game one and two. Parker and Duncan, three of 16. San Antonio down 10. Second half coming up. And L.A. playing with the desperation that we'll likely see out of the New Jersey Nets across the river in a few hours tonight at 8 Eastern on TNT. The Nets try to save their series down 2-0. Detroit won the first two games by double digits, and the Nets know they need to be better tonight we have to win we have to come out and uh, play well in game three if we want to have any chance of you know winning the series and uh, you know we have to protect home court like they you know Detroit protected home court I've told our team we got to play our best game that's that's what we're trying to do we played our best half 
Now we got to play a best game. Every game is a must win. Game one was a must get win. Game two is a must win. Game three. You know, every game in the playoffs is a must win. As it is for the Nets coming into tonight's game. Now, every series that goes a little while has a subplot. And one that's built is kind of interesting between the president and GM of the Nets, Rod Thorne, and Larry Brown, the head coach of the Detroit Pistons, going back to the coaching change with our buddy Byron Scott being replaced by Lawrence Frank in late January. Larry Brown quoted during the lengthy stop between games one and two, I admire what Lawrence Frank has done. I just have a hard time because of my relationship with Byron and also loving our profession as Brown continues to all of a sudden say, look, anybody can coach. I don't really know if they really thought about that, but that's basically what they are saying, and that's because they passed over a veteran assistant to get to Lawrence Frank, a much younger assistant. We should point out Larry Brown coached you during his time in Indiana, so some of that loyalty probably coming out there. Well, I, I think so, Mike. You know, Larry Brown is a very loyal person. I played for Larry Brown, very loyal to Larry Brown, love Larry Brown uh, with all my heart. So I understand where he's coming from. You know, he got me thinking about the coaching bug when I was in Indiana. Rod Thorne gave me an opportunity to coach in New Jersey, love Rod as well. So, you know, these two guys right now are having a little rift, but you, you kind of love it when you, when you have this going on in a series like this. Who cares what other teams are doing? <laughs> yeah, I love Larry Brown. Where about your own team? Who cares what other teams are doing? I don't care. But Byron getting in the mix, he's caused more controversy out of coaching than he did his three nephews with and the Nets. I, and I didn't say a word, Mike. I'm, I just, I'm just an innocent bystander. <laughs> in any case, every coach who was employed Memorial Day or Mother's Day last year is no longer in the Eastern Conference. These are great championship teams with great coaches. Who's the best championship team of all time? We're going to talk about it, and you can take part after this. This halftime report presented by Verizon Wireless. We never stop working for you. Can you hear me now? Good. Back on the Verizon Wireless halftime report. Kobe Bryant 15, Shaq 14. Lakers by 10 as they're down 0-2 in the best of seven. Well, some fun going on now from here through the finals. The all-time finals challenge. Essentially, you can be a part of a panel of 16 to pick the best NBA champ of all time. 15 experts and one vote for the fans on NBA.com. So you can hop in and say, hey, the 96 Bulls are the best champion of all time. Nah. 16 teams, well, hang on, Byron. 16 teams are seeded <laughs> by their combined record in the regular season in the playoffs. So the Bulls are the one seed against the 1970 Knicks and so on. As you see, the seeds, the Celtics of an old era play the Celtics of a more current vintage. And on through, and each week, people will advance too. Bulls against the Knicks, winner moves on. Pistons, Lakers, so on. Then you have another generation, the 87 Lakers, yeah. the number seven seed. Yeah. Are they the best team to ever win a title? Of course, seven seed. Well, you didn't win enough games in the regular season. Look, they had Worthy, they had Magic, they had Kareem, they had so many great players. And even with your presence, Byron, they were still able to <laughs> grab a seven seed. They'll be going up against the Spurs that won the first title. And you see 37-13, that was the lockout short of the season. So here's the deal. 15 experts are going to vote on each game, pick a winner and move it over, just like a bracket. And then you at home, NBA.com. One vote for the fans adds the 16. Who's the best of all time? I like the 49-50 Lakers. I thought there was... There you didn't was, see them. You weren't born. I know I did. <laughs> <laughs> I like the 87 Lakers. I mean, I, I grew up a Laker fan. Depth off the bench. They had Coop. They had Thompson coming off the bench. They had inside. They had outside. They had defense. They had offense. They had everything. 87 Lakers, without a doubt. And you've been absolved from commenting because of your bias. <laughs> Thank you. In any case, vote NBA.com. We'll be following this as it goes on through the NBA Finals. Trying to crown the best champion of all time. Will one of these two teams be a champion this year? Lakers trying to get back in the series. They're up 10. Have two comes to you after you watch this. This halftime report presented by Verizon Wireless. We never stop working for you. The second half is next after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Can you hear me now? Good. You're watching the day after tomorrow's presentation of ABC Sports Play Like There's No Tomorrow. Oh, isn't that a sweet scene on Mother's Day here in Los Angeles? Lakers on top, 42 32. Pretty sweet scene for this capacity crowd because the Lakers, down two games to love, have to have this game. Doc, you know, so much is is in regard to the Lakers all season long Lakers this Lakers that we open up the telecast what the Lakers have to do you forget there's another team here yeah so if you're San Antonio's Greg Popovich and you're back there 
at halftime. What are you trying to do if you're San Antonio down by 10 and cold as ice in the first half? Well, that's what you're doing. You're saying we're down by 10. We haven't played good basketball. Number one, you have to play better defense. You can't allow them to shoot 53%. Number two, you got to get Tony Parker involved. Now, the one thing that the Lakers are doing, in game one, two, Tony Parker got to the paint, nobody. In game three, there's four guys. He's drawing a crowd. Even when it looks like there's nobody there, he sees that gap. When he drives, there's going to be someone there, and they're going to make the Spurs, other guys, make shots. And then finally, frustration. I'm just going to force a shot. I'm going to look for Papa support, and this is the support you get. <laughs> <laughs> that look, star comparison first half. Six points for Duncan and Parker combined. Three of 16 from the field. The Lakers with 29 of their 42 points from O'Neal and Bryant. Let's check in with Michelle. Spoke with Greg Popovich coming out of the locker room, Alan. He said the aggressive team wins, and they're the aggressor. We're not even close in terms of matching their energy, and that's disappointing. It's infecting everything offensively and defensively. He said, actually, our defense has been okay. The Lakers should be up 20 the way we're playing offensively. Al? Yeah, I think he's lucky. That's what Doc and I were talking about with the disparity in field goal percentage, and the Spurs begin the second half by turning it over to the Lakers yeah, and, and I agree with Greg Popovich you know in game one and in game two we talked about the Spurs and the passion that they were playing with well in game three we've been talking about the Lakers and the passion so not a lot of great adjustments just playing harder and the team that plays the hardest wins again that's the fifth love now we talked about it to open the game that the Lakers have gotten to Shaq so that is a good adjustment Lakers capitalized after the Turkaloo offensive foul to open the period. Shaq adds two. Duncan inside. He gets fronted and backed by Malone and Bryant. And Carl Malone has to be careful. He already has one tech, so he has to really be careful in what he's doing right here. Second foul on Carl Malone. Service came over when David Robinson retired. He's been with Minnesota. Now Parker can't get free as Malone comes out to help and he throws it away. So the Lakers really helping out out front now. They really are. And I know everyone at home is saying, well, if they can do it in game three, why didn't they do it in game one and two? Lakers in a good spot. 39 straight home playoff wins by when leading by double figures, as is the case today. Peyton's going to back Parker down and then has to dish off. Three seconds. Yeah, and again, you get a three-second call, Al, because the your teammate thinks you're going to take a shot. Carl Malone was wide open, didn't take the shot. Shaq was already settled under the bucket for an offensive rebound. Happened before with Devin George in the first quarter. Lakers by a dozen. Parker, who's been just magnificent in the first two games of this series. Parker won't be 22, by the way, until... A week from tomorrow. Free is the service. But a step outside of his range. Malone, turnaround. Got it. They just open with the first four points of the third period. And again, the two man game with Carl Malone and Kobe Bryant. They really have it cooking right now. And Peyton's going to pressure Parker on the inbounds pass. Parker's dribbled for 12 seconds. He's got Bryant. Comes off a screen by Nesterovich. And the whistle from the other sideline. Uh, defensive three second. That might be the first one called in the series. Yeah, I think so. Called it on Devin George. So the clock gets reset to 14. But that's a great example, Al, of the attention that Tony Parker is bringing. Usually you get defensive three seconds when teams are trying to help them bigs. This is with a point guard 30 feet away from the bucket, and they got a three defensive three second call. That tells you the attention that Tony Parker is getting right now. That is, in effect, a technical foul, and they've taken three technical foul shots and made them all right now. All-time finals challenge. 
Only on NBA.com. You can log on. A lot of good stuff at that website. From the corner, in and out for Bowen. Duncan tries to keep it alive. Gets it back himself. Hits from 13 feet. Forty six thirty five the Lakers on top in game three the fourth game is here on Tuesday game five if necessary back in San Antonio on ABC as Gary Payton gets free underneath. Hey. Turkaloo. Offensive rebounds are keeping the Spurs in this game. Bowen all the way and then coming in to block it is O'Neal, but Duncan is there to clean it up and put it back. Another offensive rebound. Spurs have nine offensive rebounds today. Lakers have five. George lobbing it a little too deep for O'Neal. Now he's underneath and at least is able to get fouls. So Devin George throwing it a little too deep. Yeah. So I mean, you know, man, you got to give me a little yeah, bit more room. That's exactly what Shaq is saying. I mean, you're, you're taught to throw it to the corner of the backboard. <laughs> he's not hitting the corner of the backboard. But again, the adjustments where they're putting the other big is not allowing the Spurs and Tim Duncan usually to be the help guy to get there. That's still, even though he didn't catch it clean and get a dunk, it still causes a foul. Wow. That's a Barry Bonds home run right there. Oh, yeah. Crowd saluting him wildly as Shaq makes the first of two. That foul was on Nesterovich. That's his third. Willis comes into the game now. You know, Al, we, we talk about Shaq, and we've made a big deal about Shaq's free throws, and we should. But when you look at the free throw numbers, the Lakers are shooting better as a team than the Spurs in this series. It's amazing. It's amazing. Again, we, we brought it out last week, two worst free throw shooting teams in the league during the regular season. And another thing we've talked about, the most important thing in postseason play over the past 10 years as Bowen makes a three is field goal percentage. If you win the field goal percentage battle you win three out of four and today the Lakers are hitting 57 percent and the Spurs are hitting 32 percent. Yeah basically it's proven out that field goal percentage and rebounding is more important than free throw percentage. Don't tell my kids. Mm -mm. Loose ball foul after the Malone miss. There it is just in terms of what's the most important thing last 10 years higher field goal percentage three quarters of the time more rebounds about two thirds fewer turnovers 59 percent and the higher free throw percentage barely relevant. Yeah well what it says is if you make shots number one and you, and you get rebounds and don't turn it over you win like that. Devin George to Bryant. Going to the hoop, lays it off for O'Neal. Doc foul. You know, you look at this game, Doc. I look at it this way: the Spurs come in, they won two at home. They have home, you know, court. They didn't lose home court advantage. Okay, you have a, you know, you have a foul to give. You have a game to give. And the Lakers have come out knowing it's desperation time and yeah. are really playing like it. They really are. And Greg Popovich, that's one of the things he said yesterday when we talked to him, Al. He was really concerned about his team as far as will they come out and compete and not look at this game as a throwaway game because it really isn't after three games the only thing you can be in a series is two to one so you can make the case that if the Lakers hold on and win this game and it becomes two to one that's all you can be in a three game series and it's as close as it possibly can be all of a sudden. Meanwhile, Shaq had gotten red hot at the free throw line. Now three of his last four. For San Antonio, as you take a look at the guys on the floor, they have not lost a game since the end of March. 11 straight then the regular season. Duncan showing his frustration right there. And they've won six straight in the playoffs. Foul is on Malone. Well, I think uh, excuse me, on, a foul is on the uh, 
I think they're calling the three second violation again the defensive three seconds on, on Shaquille O'Neal what Shaquille O'Neal was saying is that there were guys cutting through and, and they used the word cleansing and he was cleansing himself with the guys cutting through so uh, obviously the officials disagree well I will try that again it was a defensive three second violation yes <laughs> none of the four going like a multiple choice and that's the first that again is a technical foul in effect and that's the first one of those and they've taken four that San Antonio has missed. The Spurs have not gotten to the foul line on their own apart from those technicals at all today. But again adjustments they didn't send a lot of double teams to Tim Duncan they're sending Duncan double teams every time they're sending a double team to Parker. So what this, the Lakers have decided is the other guys are going to beat us. Four seconds on the shot clock as Parker inbounds it. Out to Willis. He has to shoot. He'll miss everything. Bryant back for the Lakers. George all the way and then started to lose control of it and goes down hard as he gets fouled. Well, that's what Phil Jackson wants to see. It's no coincidence that you look at the Laker bench, every single guy for a moment was up clapping. They want Devin George to be more aggressive, not passive, but aggressive. This is an aggressive move from Devin George. George, who starts as the, in effect, fifth Beatle, has not scored today. Infectious. It really is. I know uh, we say that, but it's the truth. And if you follow a guy who have just missed four or five in a row, then the pressure's on you to make one, and it is infectious, and you do think about it. Jack is three of seven, his teammates three of eight, and now three of nine. It, it's free also. <laughs> it's a free throw, <laughs> you know? And it's 15 feet, and that hasn't changed forever. Parker gets free. Lakers clear the glass. See, Parker would love to have that back. Those are the type of shots he got in game one and two. Malone inside to O'Neal, and he gets fouled. Yeah, much too late. You know, Tim Duncan knows it. Um, if you don't foul Shep before he gets the ball above his waist, then you are in trouble. That's one of those ones where Tim Duncan is switching and just hoping that he just let it go. Once he catches it, it's too late. Bam, that's a foul. In those cases, you just let him have the dunk. The seventh lob already in this game to Shaq. 21 points. O'Neal is three out of seven. And now three out of eight from the free throw line. The Laker lead, which was 10 at the half, is 13, about halfway through the third quarter. But if you're Greg Popovich, what you don't like thus far, even though you're only down 13 and have not played well, what you don't like is the pace of this game. It's much too slow for the Spurs. Parker finally getting knocked down as he goes to the hoop. Yeah, well, you read it for three days. Yeah. You know, all the Lakers talked about was that they were going to make Tony Parker feel them if he gets in the paint. And, and what I was saying is they couldn't because they were never back. He was out running everybody. Now it's a half court game and they're doing that. Michelle to you. Well Tony Parker just got to the foul line by running right into the bigs and Memphis coach uh, Hubie Brown said after getting swept by San Antonio Tony Parker finishes in the paint in the face of big people right in their face and you go through the NBA right now and you don't have five point guards who can do that. He deserves credit for that Al. Timeout Lakers, second of two upcoming when we come back. Los Angeles 53, San Antonio 40 in game three. The NBA playoffs on ABC brought to you by the all new Toyota Tundra Double Cab, not just big, life sized. DreamWorks Pictures, Shrek 2 in theaters everywhere Wednesday, May 19th. And all stay. Are you in good hands? Al Michaels, Doc Rivers, Michelle Tafoya back in L.A. Let's take a look at the McDonald's NBA playoff brackets. 
up to the moment. Four series in progress right now. Indiana up 2-0 on Miami in the East. And Detroit up 2-0 on Jersey in the East as well last night. Big time comeback by the Timberwolves squaring their series with the Kings of the Game of Peace in court here. San Antonio up two games to love. But the Lakers trying to win game three up by 13 have led since the early part of the first quarter. Yeah, and you know, again, you look at some things that are going on in this game. One, Shaq getting lobs. Two, Kobe and Carl Malone playing the two-man game. Three, the crowd that Tony Parker and Tim Duncan are, are gathering every time they touch the ball. Those are the adjustments. But the most important fact to me is that the Spurs have not been allowed to run. And they need to run. Greg Popovich said that before the series started. In game one and two, they did that. Parker missing the back end. Peyton oh, wow. tried to lob it to Kobe, very ill-advised and ill-timed yeah. pass. And that Gary was... looks at the bench and goes, that's on me. Yeah, that was a lob to tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> at best. Foul is on Devin George. Two on him. When Parker went to the free throw line a moment ago, that's the first time in a non-technical situation the Spurs have shot a free throw today. Bowen alone. Short. George with the carom. And he goes down, knocked down from behind by Ori. Well, they're letting them play, that's for sure. And that's not all bad. To me, that is consistent official. You know, when they both when they have decided that they're gonna allow you to play, they're gonna call the fouls, the hard fouls. They're not gonna let the game get out of control, but they're gonna let the players play. I actually like when they do that, as long as they are consistent. And I think they've been very consistent in that this afternoon. George at the free throw line, that foul was on Ori. George is 0 for 2 from the line. Lakers are now 7 of 18 from the free throw line. Spurs have been in the line for just six shots, the four technicals and the two by Parker. And they're three out of six. You know, you, you look at the beginning of the third quarter and the Lakers have not played great basketball. You know, I think the Spurs are losing an opportunity here or maybe have lost an opportunity here to get back in this game. Well put, 15 point Laker lead is LA's biggest of the game. Duncan. O'Neal, another rebound. 11 rebounds now for Shaquille O'Neal. Has oh, that flipped away. Pass. Ooh, to Malone. move. Wow, again, challenging the big guys is what Tony Parker does. Runs that wheel route. That's what they call it in football. That's right? what they call it in basketball. I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was impressed. You should have said it in there football. football. <laughs> Brian hits. I'm just warming up for camp. It's three months away. That's all. <laughs> Fifth How does the hell know that? <laughs> <laughs> And Devin George reaches in. And let's go back to that wheel route. It's funny, it's the same call. Look, you see Ginobili cut through, and this is the dribble handoff or just handoff. It's basically a wheel, and that's how Tony Parker gets it. See Shaq, but that doesn't stop him. I knew there was something that could bring the two sports together. Doc, thank you for the props. You know, <laughs> I started the season thinking Ray Felix was still playing. <laughs> Ori at the free throw line. Four and a half remaining, third quarter. Again, you know, if you're a coach, if you're Phil Jackson, you're looking at this lead and you're thinking, not the way I want it. You know, we could be up more. If you're Popovich, you're thinking, we're still right in this game. Anything but a blowout, and of course, it's the NBA, the regular season and postseason, very much the same. 13-point lead 
Four and a half to go in the third. How many times have you seen that overcome? A million? A million. We saw it last night With in four Minnesota. Minutes, yeah, four minutes left in the game. Bryant in and out. And then Duncan, who was pressured by Bryant to rush back to Kobe, and that's a big time turnaround. That is, and Kobe Bryant made that play. And there's another reason why, when you're a coach, you tell your big man to pick the ball up and give it to a guard. Timeout, San Antonio. Kobe Bryant has 20 points to go with O'Neal's 21 and Malone's 10. Here it is again. Yeah, all caused by Kobe's pressure on Duncan. He saw a big man with the ball. He put pressure on him, made him turn it over, and then gets it back and makes the three. 3.55 left in the third. The Lakers are up by 16. Back at Staples Center, Lakers leading 60 to 44, and I'm joined now by Jamie Foxx, who's going to be hosting the ESPYs this year, and oh, yeah. also has a new movie coming out, Breaking All the Rules. Yeah. And but you just told me you're a Dallas Mavericks yeah. fan, so what are you doing here? Because I'm a huge Payton fan and Shaquille Hill fan. I know where my heart is, but when it, when we can't make it, then I come root for them. And I know Gary been having it hard, you know what I'm saying? But I know what he's going to pull through. He's going to do his thing, and he's going to get that ring. You think that he's been uh, made the scapegoat unfairly? Yeah, of course. I, I just think it's like you need somebody to blame. But Gary's a man. He, he take the fingers or whatever like that. But he know he's a, he's a superstar. He, he's gonna eventually be one of the one of the best point guards to ever play the game. He he know he know the deal. Well, now that Dallas is out of it, I, I am assuming you're rooting for this team. What did you think when they were down 0-2? I just think it's just a matter of getting into the flow. You know, when you eat so much and you and you and you, you're already full. You got three championships. This is kind of hard to get hungry when you got that. So this will make him hungry. Gary's definitely hungry. I just got to talk to his wife and everything, and he's definitely ready. He's, he's on point, so he's ready to do his thing. What do you make of this first half? I mean, they came out with such incredible energy. Hey, you can't you can't count them Lakers out, man. That big boy, that big boy Shaquille O'Neal and them, man. He eats, man. And when you give him in a, when, you, when you feed him. That's it. You know, he told us once, as long as you keep feeding the dog, he'll be happy. Exactly. You got to feed that big man, and you got to let Gary get into the flow, and then you let that Kobe do that sniper thing he does, and then you got it. Okay, last thing I'm going to ask you. Uh, Doc Rivers, you know, is new head coach of the Celtics. What do, you, what do you think of the Boston Celtics, Jamie? Well, they used to hurt my feelings back in the 80s when it was going up against the Lakers, you know, when I was I grew up for magic and everything like that. But I think they got a great coach in him, and it's going to be all right. Uh, you just totally kissed up to Doc. You realize that. <laughs> I got to because that's, you know, that's my man. You know what I'm saying? I want him to do his thing. I, and I want him to be successful because he, he's a good guy. All right. Good luck with the new movie. We'll see you at the ESPYs. Go check it out. And check out uh, uh, Breaking All the Rules and the ESPYs going to be hot. Thanks, Jamie. Back to you guys. All right, Michelle. Meanwhile, the big dog's enjoying about a five-course meal right now. Yes, they are. The Ashak has 23 points. And now from the outside, Devin George to make it a 20-point lead with Boy. Malone on the bench and magic exultant. Yeah, you know, it's funny. You, you watch this third quarter, and the, the Spurs or the Lakers were not really into it, but the Spurs had to be to get back in this game, and they may have lost a golden opportunity. And O'Neal with the clean block. Out in front of Peyton, and Gary puts it in. And it counts, and he's fouled. This game reminds me so much of game three last year when the Lakers were down 2-0. But first, Devin George makes a shot. Another block shot by Shaq. More attention to Tony Parker and getting Payton involved. One of the things Gary Payton did when they started the season was he led the break. And this afternoon, he's done that several times again. The Lakers in one spell swoop are going from the obituary page back to the sports section. Yeah, and we said that before the game. All the Spurs did was win their two home games. Now it's the Lakers' turn, and it looks like they're going to win the first game. So the Spurs are thinking that's okay. We come in game four. If we can win that, then we're still in good shape. Peyton, three-point play. Malik Rose makes his first appearance of the series. One-time starter for the Spurs in here with Ginobili, Parker, Devin Brown, and Duncan. Brown drives, and he gets the basket, and he gets fouled as they try to get it back to 20. Yeah, Devin Brown continues to play well. You know, we, we talked about Gary Payton, and there's been so much stuff about Gary Payton, and now we talked about this yesterday. 
I, I think it's been really unfair to Peyton to use his career numbers against his playoff numbers in this series because in the past he's always been the go-to guy the guy that's gotten 30 shots and in this series it's not the same and I was there yesterday I gotta tell you something I mean I see the way that gets played with sound bites and all this nonsense it's so much crap it really is and I mean look you know Gary does a lot to it in, uh, of it to himself but for crying out loud you ask the guy Ten questions. It's the same question asked ten different ways. Yeah, and you know, I didn't mind, and I think Phil Jackson probably didn't mind it either that he showed some emotion and said, "Listen, point at me. Do what you want about me. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to go out and play the game." They brought him in here to be a role player, not to be a star, and he's trying his best at that. But you can never use a starter's numbers against another guy's numbers if he's not the focal guy. I'm always fascinated. 3,000 miles away, somebody's not there. You see enough sound bites, and all of a sudden, you can either write a column about it or do 40 seconds of a of a sound bite, and it just gets. I mean, look, everybody's always talking about things getting blown out of proportion. That was. That was. Here's Duncan. But not, you know, I mean, Gary's been going through this all season yeah. long. So, what, what was what was really new? And he, he has not played well. Let's not. You know, you shot 22% going into this game, but there's only been about three or four shots per game. That's not a lot. Luke Walton in the game for the first time, and with his dad looking on, he misses that shot. Brown comes away with it. A minute 40 remaining in the third period. Foul inside on Walton. You know, one of the things you, you look at this game and we see 21 point lead, but we've also seen the Lakers give up leads. And, you know, there's a minute and 34 left in this quarter. The Spurs are thinking if we can cut four points, four points, four or five points off this lead before the quarter, then we have a chance at least of getting back in the game. Reminder, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone hosted by the Stars. That's tonight, 7 o'clock Eastern and Pacific, 6 Central. Here on ABC. Rose makes one of two, 70 50, LA by 20 with a minute and a half to play, third period. Rush. Walton now will slow it up. And Malone missing underneath, but getting fouled in the process. And now that we've gotten that off our chest, Al, we can go back to the game. Yeah, Doc, <laughs> why not? Hey, we're always getting critiques. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Wait till Michelle gets to Monday night. Oh, oh. Stop the stop the subscriptions, Michelle. <laughs> now we have Michelle Tafoya going to join us, as many of you know, on Monday Night Football this year. Very much looking forward to it. I am too, and I will be critiquing. You will be critiquing. <laughs> You'll be <laughs> the training camp with the yeah. Celtics. I, I have a feeling I'm going to be very strongly critiqued, not only by the audience, but by some guy in Boston who's going to be watching. <laughs> yes, that's so, true. so that, that makes Doc fair game too next year when he's head coaching the Celtics. <laughs> right back at you, pal. <laughs> I hear you. Hey, we're going to open up our Monday night on a Thursday this year, Indianapolis against New England. So just about the time we're starting training camp. Yes. Doc. I'll be there. We'll, get, we'll, we'll start working on the wheel routes with <laughs> Yes. 71-50, Lakers by 21. Rose and Malik Rose drains one from 15. This is amazing. You can sit. I mean, Malik Rose hasn't played at all and probably was sitting there thinking that he wouldn't play, and he comes in, catches the ball, and makes his first shot. Stolen by the Spurs, and Brown is free. And Jams it in, and now it's a 17 point lead. See, exactly what we were talking about. Now, I look over at the bench right on that, and I look at Phil Jackson, and he's up. Mm -hmm. See, he knows what's going on. He's thinking, guys, it's never safe, and you cannot allow this team to sneak back in. Ginobili with the great hands to Brown, and he gets the dunk. And again, all they wanted to do was cut four or five points off that lead, and they're about to do it. Now Walton is at the free throw line. Of all the crazy numbers today, Devin Brown leads San Antonio in scoring with 12 points. He came off the bench. Ginobili has 10. Dad breathes a, a sigh of relief. You never know <laughs> when any Laker goes to the free throw no. line. Yeah, it's an adventure. Walton first round pick. Played for Lute Olsen at the University of Arizona. Crowd pop salutes him. 
19 point Laker lead. And the foul is on Rush. And now all of a sudden, the whistle was blowing a lot. You know, the ref sensed that one moment where it looked like the game was starting to get out of control, and now they're bringing this game back under control. Eighteen point game. Final minute of the third quarter. Lakers trying to make it two games to one. San Antonio. The third straight home victory as Fisher takes it all the way, goes to the deck, and goes to the free throw line. Literally all the way. I mean, they pressed him the entire way up the court, and he just decided, I'm going to break the press, and I'm going to take it up, I'm going to split two bigs, and I'm going to get to the bucket. Just look at the NBA playoffs. Tune into the NBA TV playoff show. It's called Destination Finals. It's every weeknight on NBA TV. 601 on Direct TV, Doc. 601. <laughs> Thank you. I've been looking. <laughs> <laughs> all basketball all the time. Half minute to go. Third period. Lakers by 20. Ginobili. That's a three. It's at 17. And the Lakers will. Take as much of the clock as they can. Slight differential. Second and a fraction between shot and game. Bryant wants Malone to go to the baseline. Ball complies and then comes back out to set the screen. And Kobe throws it underneath and throws it away to Rose. And then Fisher comes in from behind to knock it away with 2.4 seconds. Oh, wow. And San Antonio will inbound. Yeah, they missed court. this one. They missed this one. I thought that ball bounced off a of rose. So the inbound of three would make it a 14 point game. 2.4 seconds as Turkaloo gets ready to inbound to Rose. He puts one up. And it's a 17 point game. So at the end of three, the Los Angeles Lakers, 75, the San Antonio Spurs. 58. This presentation of the NBA and ABC will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Fourth quarter begins. Al Michaels, Doc Rivers, Michelle Tafoya, Los Angeles. Lakers up by 17. Let's take a look at the All-State Good Hands plays. And the key guy, Doc, is Big Shaq. Yeah, it is. It's Carl Malone and Shaq. I mean, it's been the two-man game between those two. It's more about adjustments. You know, find Carl Malone. That guy can't help on Shaq. Carl Malone, in turn, didn't find Shaq. Great hands by Shaq catching the ball. What a pass that was by Malone, too. It really was. I mean, he is play. a great passer, but again, we talk about it now. He's played with John Stockton, maybe, or is the best passer of all time. I don't think Malone ever got credit for his passing. Shaq starts the fourth quarter. Rick Fox in. Let's check in with Michelle. In that last huddle, Greg Popovich said, all that's important now is to try to do everything we've done all year. This quarter, whether we win or lose the game, will make a huge difference for the rest of the series. Whether we win or not, not important. It's about playing the way we've played all season and seeing how things come out. Doc, you agree? Yeah, I do. You know what he's saying is, listen, guys, I don't know if we're going to win this game or not. But if we can get back in this game, if we can stand up to this Laker run and prove to ourselves that we do belong and can beat them, then we have a chance of winning game four. Greg Popovich is doing two things. He's trying to give them hope for game three, but give them more hope for game four. Offensive foul on Peyton. And along those lines, as Ginobili launches a three and gets it, you're right, Doc. I mean, if, if you get blown out, then you begin to think, oh, you know, we don't have that much of a chance in game four. Then you lose game four. It's a best of three again. Exactly. And already, look at the score, Al. The, the Spurs, you can make a point, are back in this game. Duncan, back outside. Ginobili, that would have really put him back in the game. This could, too, but Turkolo passes it up. They work it around to the other side again. 
Now, all of a sudden, who is hustling? Who's getting all the loose balls? This is how the Lakers got the lead, and this is how the Spurs are getting back in this game. Crowd can feel it as well. Duncan to Brown driving. And again, they control the glass. Ginobili. This will be their fifth shot. He can't even get that one away. They have four offensive rebounds. Payton to Medvedenko. And that won't go either. No, and that's a bad break. You know, you have a three on two, and the five stops and takes a jump shot. Sure. Turk a little missing. And oh. Neal with a rebound. Boy, well, it's under with every they're, chance. They're dodging him. I'm telling you right now. Major. Peyton. And they're going to call that. A trip. A trip. He's sticking his foot out. On uh, Brown. This game has an, uh, an uneasy feeling right now if you're a Laker fan because you know the Lakers have played great basketball. They're looking up as only a 14 point game. And right now, the team with all the energy is the team down 14. Bryant on the bench. He gets his rest here. Shaq. Bouncing it out to Fisher. He's going to drive all the way. Doesn't get the bounce. Back come the Spurs. Ten minutes left. Duncan fouled as he goes through the lane. Foul on Fox. And that's Tim Duncan. That Duncan. Missed some time about two months ago. Gimpy legs. So every time he goes down and gets up gingerly. Yeah. The, the San whole, Antonio holds its breath. The whole city. I mean, if, if obviously, his importance is, is you, you can't understate it. And he did have some knee problems. You know, in a lot of in a strange way, it was a turnaround for the Spurs because it's when they actually start playing better and let those other guys know that they can play also. Learn to play without him. Eight points for him. It's the first time he's been to the line today. Now Kobe's going to come back into the game with 9.57 to play. And again, we go to Michelle. One more thing that Greg Popovich said in that huddle, Al. He said, we've played better than it looks, save for the free throw shooting. We all know we're the worst free throw shooting team in the history of the Western world. For, <laughs> so from now on, just let that sucker fly up there and let's at least rebound the missed free throws, Al. What about the Eastern world? <laughs> yeah, my goodness. Why just stop there? <laughs> Why make it a hemispheric thing? 12 point game. Medvedenko, boy, he, he can't pick, pass up that no, guy. No, he can't. And he wins either. <laughs> that's, that's what Phil Jackson would tell you. Peyton guarding Devin Brown. Turkle from outside the arc. Another offensive rebound. And then taken away underneath by Fisher. Peyton for three. Not get control. I tell you though. You know, Greg Popovich is thinking we had ample opportunity to get back in this game. Peyton not quite lighting it up, but doing a heck of a lot more today than he's done in some time. 13 for Gary, and the Lakers with 9-13 to play are up 80 to 63. My science project is about butterflies and their life cycle. Oh, wow. Excellent. Very good. And pressure is applied to water, it creates waves. Nice work. It's a Civic. Not just any Civic, a gasoline electric hybrid Civic. Where does the cord go? You never have to plug it in. How did you get this into the gym? The gasoline electric Civic Hybrid from Honda. Did your parents help you with this? This spring, get a lesson in the art of breaking up. And you say, hey, I want to break up with you. What? And then you bounce. From the man who wrote the book, Jamie Foxx. Someone in love could bite through her own flesh. Mm -hmm. Want some 
Tarico in the studio, the Gatorade X Factor Studio update. The Detroit Pistons did lose one playoff game to Milwaukee, but Richard Hamilton, Rasheed Wallace, and company have won their six games by an average of 17 points. They try to go up 3-0 on the Nets over on TNT tonight. At 8 Eastern, back to Al, Doc, and Michelle. Thank you, Mike. Staples Center in Los Angeles, where the Lakers thrilled to be home, proving it. Happy Mother's Day again to all the moms, all you beautiful moms. 8063 Los Angeles. Tony Parker, the star of the first two games of the series, held a four points in the first quarter, two in the third, and Gary Payton. The guy in the line of fire in terms of <laughs> absorbing all of the flack having a pretty nice afternoon. Bowen. Shaq dropped it. Saved it but it comes out to park. Nesterovic is free. Good job on the offensive glass as Rose got it. Yeah, and that's the one out. area all afternoon that the Spurs have had a big advantage on is the offensive glass. You know, just timely rebounds. They have 17 right now, 17 to 5 offensive boards for the Lakers. Of course, the other thing on the other side of that equation is they have missed exactly. a lot more shots. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know, there's no stat in our league. The team that shoots the worst in the league usually leads the league in, in offensive rebounding. As they say, that's the other side of the story. San Antonio, one of 11. Ten straight misses in the quarter. Medvedenko got it. Stolen. Fisher. All the way. See, this is what Greg Popovich doesn't want. He wants them to compete. He wants them to go out in this game competing. Turnover San Antonio. I would be surprised if we saw Tim Duncan again in this game. San Antonio today, 22 field goals, 50 misses. Hitting 31%, Lakers 58%. And Bryant goes in and goes down and goes to the free throw line. Boy, how much has Shaq and Kobe passed to each other uh, in this game? I mean, it's funny. There's been so much talked about these two players. And you see again here, the front. The lob, the great pass by Shaq, and Kobe draws the foul. Uh, these two players have been disconnected and connected at different times. And you watch their body chemistry and language this afternoon, and they're all on the same page. Out in the field, picking flowers. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. You know what? They better love each other yeah, for the boy. for the next. Well, they hope about six weeks. Well, the Spurs will definitely have something to say about that. Well, they will be on the field picking flowers. And the buzzer didn't get it off in time. Good defense. The Lakers are just playing as good defensively as they have in, in weeks. You know, one of the things Phil Jackson said about his team, the most disappointing part about his team, not in this series, but all season, is they have not been a great defensive team. And he thought when they made the trades with bringing Gary Payton, a great defensive player, and Carl Malone, they would be. And you watch this game, this is the type of defense he thought the Lakers would play all year. Jackson coaching his 230th playoff game. As we said before, he's never lost three in a row. Medvedenko high in the air to get the rebound. Peyton. Medvedenko gets it. 
And the Lakers now looking like the Spurs on the offensive glass, but can't cash. Parker gets it back. Goaltending. Wow. It was goaltending. There's no doubt about that. But what an athletic effort by Kobe Bryant. I mean, think about where he was at the start of this play. He was the guy taking the three, driving. And he's the guy that gets back and gets his hand on the ball. Just too few of those opportunities in this game for the Spurs. Lob to O'Neal. Got it back. Volleyball goes back to himself and goes to the line with a 20 point lead. The 10th lob. I'm counting. The 10th lob of the game. Most unsuccessful. Here's Michelle. Well, I just checked on the status of Tim Duncan, so whether or not he comes back in has nothing to do with his knee. They say that his knee is just fine, Doc and Al. They don't even have an ice pack on it, so it shouldn't be affected the rest of the series, at least at this point. Back to you. He gets one day's rest tomorrow, off day, Tuesday, game four. And if the Lakers win this, that will cement a game five in San Antonio on Thursday. You know, I think Greg Popovich is just doing the right thing now, you know. They're down. They're not going to win this basketball game. Your star player went down, almost hurt his knee, but didn't. No reason to take a chance. How about Shaq? He's on fire. <laughs> and he's on fire. Shaq is at five of his last seven free throws. Rose. Lakers still playing with a lot of energy. I mean, a lot. A lot. Yeah, you know, it's almost like they're trying to sit home a point right now. Devin, Devin Brown is saying this is right up my alley. Uh, open shot. Devin Brown, 15 points. They're connected this afternoon. There's no doubt about that. Bill Jackson was saying the other day, talking about Friday night, my sleep was disrupted. <laughs> to sleep like a baby tonight. The NBA playoffs on ABC brought to you by the day after tomorrow when it's all on the line play like there's no tomorrow Midas for mechanics known for their work and their word trust the Midas touch and Bud Light fresh smooth real it's all here Back in L.A., a 91-68 lead by the Lakers. You know, in game one and two, it was all about the Spurs' effort. Look at that. That was Kobe Bryant's circle. A 24-point lead, and who gets back on the play is Kobe Bryant. Though it was golden, uh, goaltending, that is one heck of an effort. We talked about it on the pregame show today when we did our little cut-in from here, Doc. You know, he comes out, sometimes he shoots too much or shoots not enough for his teammates' liking. Sometimes he comes out aggressive sometimes he comes out passive however he came out today it was a pretty good blend yeah and I thought it was more on the defensive end you know he made those three threes to start the game but basically I thought Kobe Bryant set this team up defensively he was guarding Parker a lot to start the game he got a couple of key steals and I thought he set the tone and that was big to guard Parker Parker just killed them the other night at the outset. So the Lakers big four and there they are O'Neal big time game two in a row for him. Talked about Kobe Payton playing his best game of the series. And Malone a quiet 11. Quiet 11 but efficient and Malone should get credit for his defense on Tim Duncan. Got a couple of swipes pulled the cheer out of him. The bottom line is the Lakers play with more energy. You know in game one we talked about the lack of energy. In game two, they've had it. They've gotten transition buckets, and the Spurs have not. 
Brian Cook now comes in. So everybody can empty the bench. Charlie Ward is in for San Antonio, and the hand is for Shaquille O'Neal. You know what's interesting? It's something that Phil Jackson has really never done. He, he rarely empties his bench. You remember with the Bulls. The Bulls could be up by 40, and you would see Pippen and Jordan still on the floor at times. And, and he does the same thing a lot here, especially with Kobe. Ward missing. Out of bounds to L.A. Shaquille, big night in San Antonio, game two. He'll have to ratchet it up again and again unless the, the Lakers somehow blow a 26-point lead. It will be a game five, and we'll have it for you at 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock out here on the coast Thursday night from the SBC Center in San Antonio, tipping by Malone, 96 68. Well, the big four has responded. Now, the question you're going to get now about the Lakers and the Spurs was game one and two just something that the Spurs did because they were at home will be the answer for the Spurs to the question. And can the Lakers play with this much energy every night? And now another question here for San Antonio is Brown went down and just for the moment he's a slip down on a wet spot as Popovich goes over things with the officials is that he got up as if he had strained a groin. He looks okay. And nice job by Phil Jackson, waiting until the right moment to take Gary Payton out. I think Gary Payton really needed to hear that noise. Even though players and coaches always say they don't care, they care. Rush comes in for him. Phil does have a fairly meticulous sense of timing. Willis. We have the two oldest guys in the league on the floor right now with three and a half minutes left in the game. Keep thinking, you know, Malone can call Willis Potts. <laughs> yeah. These two guys have faced each other since 1985. World News Tonight coming up next, except on the West Coast. You know, sometimes you have to put things in historical perspective in terms of sports. With Malone and Willis going back to 85. They first met in a game about the same time. Think of it in these terms. Remember the fabulous Chicago Bear Miami Dolphin game when the Bears were undefeated in 85? I remember Monday that night very game. well, yep. I must and, tell and you. And the Dolphins, as a Chicago Bear fan, you had to. <laughs> yes. Well, that game was played about the same time these guys were facing each other in a basketball game. That seems like a thousand years ago. It was if you're a Bears fan. <laughs> Everything's a thousand years ago <laughs> if you're a Bears fan. Rose. My goodness, it was a long time ago. <laughs> uh, but you know what? Lovey Smith is going to turn it around for you. Oh, I'm that hoping now. I'm hoping. You know, Rudy Bukic is liable to come back and play quarterback for you. We need uh, Walter back. We need McMahon back. That whole. That, that was an amazing run by the Bears, though, you must say. That's the one. You want Ditka <laughs> back, too, as a tight end? Yes, yes. Meanwhile, Malone comes out of the game. So Phil Jackson making sure each of his guys get a curtain call. And the Lakers, and again, they wouldn't have been mathematically dead had they lost today, but they would have been dead. They were dead if they had lost this game today. And, and now all, they're gonna, all you're going to hear for the next three days is, well, we've held serve. Lakers need to hold serve once more to turn it into a best of three. 25 point Laker lead. Ryan Russell. Willis gets it back, gets fouled, shot counts, foul on Cook. Best of seven series, as most of you uh, have been hearing about, reading about recently. Only seven times has a team erased a, a two-game deficit and come back to win a playoff series. The last time was nine years ago, the Rockets against the Suns. And I was involved in the one right before then, and Phil Jackson was the coach. I was playing for the New York Knicks. We win game one and two against the Chicago Bulls. We have a three day break in between uh, and we felt it, it took some of the, our momentum away that break 
we went to Chicago and Jordan had a 56 point uh, game or something in that area. I had nothing to do with that. And, um, you know, the Bulls came back and won that series. It's very similar to this situation. Rose out of the corner off the side of the board. This is super garbage time. <laughs> if there is a thing, you know, when courtside seats are two thousand bucks a copy, there's no such thing as super oh, garbage that, time. That is so true, and that's why no one has left from their courtside. <laughs> that's <seat>. right. <laughs> They're gonna suck every second yes. out of it. <laughs> two minutes to play. All right. Part the kid who grew up in. Inglewood, which was where the form was when the Lakers were playing there before they moved into this building in the 1999-2000 season. The Lakers completing their fifth season at Staples. Three banners are up. You had last year when San Antonio beat them in this round. And now the question is, will there be another? Cook. Cook with a rebound. It can't be super garbage time when number eight is in the game. No, that's for sure. No, you know, I, I'm surprised he's out there. They don't have many guys left. Ryan underneath, and now they're going to give give Kobe his curtain call because Luke Walton's going to come off the bench and send Kobe to what should be a pretty rousing ovation to the bench. Lakers have it wrapped up in the refrigerator, as the late Chip Kern would say. Eggs are cooling, butter's getting hard. <laughs> When this is over, coming up next, World News Tonight, Sunday, or your local news, except out here on the West Coast. As we went to the break, as you look at Malone and the Laker bench and Peyton and the rest, Shaq, they couldn't get Colby out of the game because he was the guy who was fouled. They will in a second, the next opportunity, but he has to take his free throws. You know, unlike a scorer, when a game is decided to miss free throws, you know, Al, this is called, this is a chance to help those stats. It's rare where you see them miss one. 22 for Bryant. Lakers in triple figures for the first time in their eight playoff games. Five against Houston. Three against the Spurs. Here's the whistle. Here's the the foul and the stoppage of play. Foul is on Fisher and Luke Walton will come into the game. Kobe Bryant going to the bench. Doc talking about defensively, meaning as much as what he did offensively. Brown at the line. Let's check in with Michelle. Hey, Al, as you hear the crowd chant Kobe, remember when Phil Jackson told us that Devin George went through a despondent phase earlier yep. this season? Devin George is sitting on the sideline, just turned and looked at me and said, do I look despondent now? <laughs> <laughs> well, no. He doesn't. He has to keep doing that. That's what a 22-point win will do for you. Rush. Well, that's what you have to love about Phil Jackson. I mean, it's not that I couldn't sleep last night. It's disrupted sleep. Yeah. It's a team who's in the futures in, in question. He calls it a nebulous future. That's what makes him a great coach. He's one of the few coaches in the league that is concerned that he didn't, didn't get that straight eight hours. That's <laughs> right. You know, it bothered him. So the Spurs will lose for the first time since the end of March. They won 11 consecutive regular season games at the end. Six playoff games. They lost March 23rd at Minnesota. You know, you can anticipate a lot of things. I didn't anticipate. I, I thought the Lakers might win the game. In fact, I thought they would win the game, but not the way they wanted, convincingly, yeah, authoritatively. I, I didn't have a feel going into this game, but I did think it'd be a very close game, especially yesterday when we spent time in the hotel with some of the Spurs and, and they look so comfortable and so ready 
uh, that I thought you knew the Lakers were going to come out and play well, but I thought so with the Spurs. And, you know, the fact is the Lakers played great defense, and the Spurs didn't have a great game. Meanwhile, I thought Jackson was, was fairly confident for a guy whose team had lost two on, on the road, had to win the game under the just the most intense scrutiny all season long. I guess they're, they're used to that, but at a certain point, I mean, the collective weight of that just has to, if it doesn't weigh you all the way down, at least partially down. They're used to it. You know, yeah. you, you think they, they've gotten more, uh, just the, the minute they made the trade or the, the pickups with Malone and Peyton, I don't know if there's been any team talked about more than this team. I agree with you. And of course, had they lost or been swept in the series, it would have been a most inglorious ending to an era. There's no question. This is a team that next year, God knows what it's going to look like. But they're not thinking about next year. They're thinking about Tuesday because they've turned it back into a series. Two games to one, San Antonio. The Lakers knock off the Spurs in game three, 105-81. Back in Los Angeles after this.